Hey guys, Average Joe here. And in the previous video, we disassembled our dumbbell. In this video, we are going to inspect the parts to make sure that there are no other parts that need to be replaced in order to make sure that this dumbbell is going to work properly. So I'm going to go through the dumbbell one end to the other and talk about taking a look at the individual parts. You can see here on a selector dial that this has some pretty torn up lugs. This one's actually missing chunks of the lugs. You could technically continue to use this. There's enough meat on here that they will continue to function, but at some point, these things are going to be completely destroyed. And I am making uh, new dials for these, uh, but they're a few months away. Uh, but, you know, keep an eye on this. Make sure if you do have lugs that are snapped off, um, basically, you can use these <laughs> with as few as one lug remaining. If these two were snapped off completely and you only had one lug remaining, technically you could continue to use the dial but it's probably not going to last long because now that one lug is enduring the force that would normally have been distributed across the three lugs. But uh, make sure that you look at your dials and see what sort of condition they're in and if they need to be replaced. The discs, it depends. Uh, you know, for many of you, you're just going to have various, you know, uh, stages of broken or warped discs. Uh, the good thing is if you have any discs that are still in good shape and you want to sell them, sell them on a site like eBay and uh, you can recover some of the money that you invest in an upgrade. Now, you know, as I have more and more customers, more and more of them are now selling these parts on eBay. So there's more of these than ever before. But, uh, you know, you can put them up there and if it's worth your time, try to sell some of these and recoup your money. But it doesn't matter what the condition of the disc is, uh, is in for the upgrade because you're going to be replacing the entire stack. The crossbar assembly, what we're primarily looking for on this assembly, two things. One is the condition of the center hole here on this plate. Now notice some of these, and I'll, let me get another one here. Some of these are in rough shape. If you look closely, you can see that this is actually bent. And it's, it's pushed up into where this lug goes. So this could be a problem when you're doing the upgrade because it's going to be smashed up into where the new disc's lug is supposed to go. So just be aware that the condition of this hole is going to determine uh, the assembly and also the, the performance of the upgrade afterward. The second thing I look for, and I'm going to remove here carefully these two ball bearings and these two springs. The second thing I look at is the condition of this locking pin. Now to access this pin, there's a little bit further disassembly required. In this case, you have to take off this little kidney shaped plate. And the way that I do it, I put my two fingers on the back where the nuts are. If you have the kind that has a boss here instead of a nut, it doesn't matter. But if you have the kind that has a nut, put your fingers over where the nuts are and loosen the uh, screws doesn't take a lot of force. These are not on there with a lot of force. You should use thread lock on them when reassembling though, because you don't want these to loosen up. So you're going to take your screws out, take your plate off, pull out your spring and pop out your pin. Sometimes 
it is a bit of a pain. You can poke down into the hole and it will come out. And what you're looking for is the condition of this pin. If you're replacing them, it doesn't matter, but this pin is responsible for keeping your dials from rotating while you're working out. So this is an important part of the safety mechanism of the dumbbell. Uh, this pin is in pretty decent shape. The other thing I'm looking for here is the size of the pin shaft. So you can see here, I make different shaft sizes depending on the pin. Your pin is going to have a very particular shape and size. This one is the appropriate pin for this part. But anyway, you're looking to see the condition of this pin. And you're going to do that in both of your crossbar assemblies. You're going to check out both of your dials. And you're going to check out both of your plates. Uh, the last part that I take a look at is the condition of the washers and the springs. These springs sometimes get chewed up. They're a little bit difficult to find, uh, but you can typically find uh, suitable replacements in a local hardware store. Those are the uh, springs that go with your ball bearings. And this, you can see here, this is the condition of some OEM washers. Unfortunately, they get, you know, pretty rough shape sometimes. And if that's the case, that is why I provide replacements. So that's the inspection of all your parts. Make sure that you have everything there. Make sure that your screws aren't stripped in any way. Uh, make sure that you have all the springs and the ball bearings. There should be four ball bearings, four springs for those ball bearings, two of your original springs that went with your locking pins. And um, yeah, so that's the inspection of your dumbbell. And in the next video, we're going to talk about replacing the locking pins in one of your crossbar assemblies. So I will see you in the next video.